it's Gigi. Welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be all about my hairline surgery. Today actually marks 11 months since I had it done and I can honestly say it's been one of the best things I've ever done for myself. I was always really, really insecure and if you knew me, I was always fidgeting with hair powder and I never really liked wearing my hair back because of a scar I had on my hairline and it was a little bit receding and it just was not the tea. So one day I just decided I had had enough and I really wanted to fix it. And you guys are always asking me to make this video an update video because I said I was going to make it a few months back, but I think now is the time because it's almost been a year. I want to talk about things I've done to care for it, things I wasn't told going into it. I know a lot of people have asked me like, oh my God, what do you think about it? Because I want to do it. And I'm like, oh my God, is this like a thing? It just made me feel not alone to have so many people reach out and a lot of people that you guys probably know and watch on YouTube and Instagram and stuff were like, oh my God, I want to do this too. And I'm like, you don't need it. Like your hairline's already beautiful, but everyone kind of has these little things. And I just found it really interesting that a hairline surgery was a thing that people wanted to do. Okay, so before we get into my results, I really wanted to break down things that I wasn't told. One of which being, I had no idea how much swelling and bruising I would have. It was actually offensive. I was gagged. I'm like, how can I have that much going on on my face afterwards after just having stuff done above my, my face? I'm talking like a full week, week and a half of looking a mess. And I had no idea that that was possible. I had never heard that that happens. I just heard that, you know, your hair follicles scar, they shed, and then your new hair grows beautifully. It just sounded so easy, but for me, it definitely was not like that. If you are looking to undergo this procedure or you know somebody who's going to, maybe let them know and tell them that maybe they need a week off or something because it was really intense and it was very scary. I also was completely unaware that some hairs wouldn't take. I thought everything that was put in would stick and would be Gucci and grow and just be like stunning. That's not the case whatsoever. You have to really, really, really be extremely gentle on your hairs after you get this done. You can't be washing your hair, you can't be itching or anything because if that hair follicle pops out, it's very rare that it will still be like, you know, DNA in there for it to grow more hair. I was very gentle, but now seeing my results, I see some irregularities in my hairline. Not to say that I'm not extremely happy. I'm like 100%, 200% happy with my hairline, but I can tell where there's a hair or two that hasn't taken. It's a really big investment for the most part. For me, I was like, I really want this to work the first time. I'm not trying to go back like two or three times. I just want it to be fierce the first time around. I also didn't know that the hairs that are gonna be growing are gonna be coming in a lot thicker and coarser. I've even compared them to like pubic hair. It is the thickest, coarsest, like nastiest. I'm trying not to make this sound vulgar or like unpleasant, but at the beginning they really did feel like pubic hair, just very thick and coarse. But like the textures would vary. Some would be, you know, growing out straight and dark. Some would be growing out light and curly. So it was kind of just a mess. And I was like, how am I gonna be styling my hair when this grows out further? Because I'm gonna have this hair texture back here, but I'm gonna have this new hair texture in front. And for months right after the surgery, I literally did not want to show my hairline because I was so insecure about it. I was like, this is not what I signed up for. The hairs look insane. And I know a lot of you guys caught on to this. There was like a period of time, like for like maybe five months, I was wearing scarves and like Lady Gaga Joanne hats. I look back now, I am by no means a hat person, let alone a scarf and a hat person. That's something I wish somebody had said to me. I don't remember the last time I've ever like genuinely worn a hat. I couldn't do like a little chic pushed back moment with like little tendrils of hair. No, I needed to slip all my hair and just pray for the best. I definitely say prepare for that because that was a humongous moment for me. I'm like, I have to wear this hat again. No, no, not again. <laughs> So during that time where my hairs were growing out, if there was a car window open, if I was walking too fast, if there was a slight breeze, they would just be sticking straight up. And don't even get me started on the mornings because I'm like a face sleeper. Like I need to be on my stomach with my hand like under the pillow preferably. Girl. 
So I made a little concoction that works for me if you are somebody that's trying to grow your hair, improve the density of it, or you might be balding, or you suffer from alopecia, or anything like that. I definitely recommend this little recipe I made up, or something like this. My friend sent me this TikTok of this girl using the brand The Ordinary, and it was the multi-peptide serum for hair density. I've since run out, but there's more on the way. In the TikTok, she put a few drops on her hair and put it like just at like her her temples where she felt like she was balding and then she said like six months later and it sold me there were little sprouts her hair looked thicker it looked like just better and I thought if I can put that on my hair every single day just a little amount I think that it will help my hair grow and make it a lot softer so basically what I do is I start with a leave-in conditioner right now I'm using the Amika leave-in conditioner right as I'm at the end of it I would say like two tenths of the bottle left. I'll fill the rest up with water, just like a little part water, and then I'll put a lot of the ordinary serum in there. I'll also add rose water just to make it like just seem nice like I'm using a product, not like this weird concoction I've made. But lastly, I'll use, it's a 10. They have this clear serum slash oil. I'll use a little bit of that. That is basically my concoction. So if you are someone who has thinning hair or you just feel like your hairline is receding, which is 100% natural, it happens to all of us, try this trick on the spots where you see thinning or want more hair and let me know how it works for you. All right, let's get into it. I'm gonna zoom you guys in, bring you guys a little closer so we can have a little personal up close moment and I will show you guys what 11 months of a hair transplant surgery looks like. So first of all, I'm still gagged at my hairline. Like this is mine. I actually can't believe it. If you guys remember before, I had a very thick white scar at the top of my hairline. I don't think that I recovered as well as I could have slash the job was done as well as it could have been. So. It is completely covered, you cannot see it, and even when I wear my hair back in like a snatch, snatch, snatched pony, you can't see anything. I went for a complete circle, which some people don't like, but I'm very down for that. If I'm gonna be going in and doing this, I want an installed wig, honey. I want it to be completely circle. They are still a little coarse, but now I can style them, and I'm actually really happy that they're this coarse because now when I style my hair, it can take heat, it can take brushing it out because it is so thick. It was taken from the underside of my head. This area right here, I feel like I had a few hairs that didn't make it. <laughs> RIP. But all in all, I'm not worried about it because the majority did and also no hairline is perfect. I think it's fine. I feel like this was a total success. And if you ask me, I think it was the concoctions doing. Me just so proud about my concoction, wanting it to have all the credit. Okay, so you guys have seen up close and personal. I can't wait until it is like fully grown out. It truly was one of the best things I've ever done. And I'm still so shocked that a lot of people want to hear about it. It truly shows that everyone is their own worst critic. And I hope this video was educational in any way. If you're looking to do something like this or your friend, or your family, whatever, please give them this advice because I would have loved a video like this before going in to do mine. Let me know what else you'd like to see in the near future and make sure your bell notifications are on so you are first notified when I upload a new video. I love you guys so much and how old school is this setup right now? I was like, no, today's not a studio day. Today's a bedroom day and I'm kind of living for it. Until I see you guys in my next video, stay gorgeous.